Okay, welcome to Heating Geeks. Uh, this video is a long time in the making. I've, um, my patrons have been asking for this video for a couple of months. I promised I'd do it. I never got around to it simply because I've been trying to think of the best way to deliver this, the best way to explain this um, in the simplest terms so people can understand it. Because uh, looking at a wiring centre in someone's house, ah! can be a bit overwhelming sometimes there's a lot of cables in there um, <sighs> that's better so what I'm going to do is strip this all down into real basic logical pathways and we're going to forget about this for a little bit we're going to forget about the wiring centre for a little bit go through the real basics the logical understanding of this stuff then we'll wire it uh, and hopefully I'll have a few PDFs that should help people out really explain how this stuff works <laughs> This is the first freebie I've ever had from anyone to do with YouTube, okay? This is from Drayton. This is an S-Plan kit. So in this box here, paperwork. Let's see if I lift this up without it all falling out. So in there we have two two ports, a room stat, a cylinder stat, a wiring center, and a programmer. Um, so once we learn the basics, we'll add in some more unusual stuff. So we'll add that on later. So, I mean, there are some great online sort of references. It won't be as obviously as in-depth as this, and hopefully this will be what develops your knowledge base, and that can be used as a, a nice quick reference. I'll get to this now. This is how I've taught people that have worked with me previously, and I call it the daisy chain method. I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know if that's how I was taught. I don't think it was. Um, the guy who taught me, uh, Len, um, a gruff northern bloke, used to just shout stuff at me. <laughs> um, and, and that was it. That's how I learned, just by doing that every day, I gradually, you know, learned it. So one of the important things you need to know about heating systems is that the the wiring colours mean nothing, okay? So in the program of room stat, cylinder stat, none of them colours mean anything. You can go to a really old house uh, and it can just be white in black and reds, okay? The only thing that gives you any idea of colours on, on a heating system is the three port or the two port, because them colours are fixed. So you're always gonna use your two port or three port as a point of reference to help you diagnose faults, okay? That's later on, but that's something you should be aware of. So basically, all this nonsense that's coming out of my mouth, forget this, all you need to know is the colours on heat and system wiring mean nothing except the two port and three port. At last. No. These are the common components that make up a heating system. Fuse spur. This side of things is all very simple, how all of this works. It's really quite basic. The problem is you come to this wiring sensor, you open it up, and it looks like spaghetti junction, okay? Because ah. usually these things are wired incredibly badly. Uh, nothing's laid out nicely, and uh, nothing's organized. So, to get the basic understanding of the cross, we're not gonna worry about this. And what we're gonna talk about here is the daisy chain, okay? This is where it all starts. This is where the power comes into the heating system. Then you have your programmer. That allows you to choose hot water or heating. Very simple. There's part two. And from here, you have your temperature controls. One for heating, one for hot water. Okay, from the temperature controls, you have your motorized valves. After all of this, the orange wire, which most people with a basic understanding of the heating system wiring will know that they need to check this orange wire for 240 volts to see if the boiler's running. <sighs> My wife would kill me if she could see this table. Right. So, these are the components of an S-Plan heating system. Now, this is a modern condensing boiler heat exchanger, okay? Um, Generally speaking, a modern condenser boiler is going to control its own pump, all right? But for the sake of this learning experience, 
we're going to take this as an older boiler, like an older, uh, like a pot of neat heat, um, or a back boiler, or some Kingfisher floor stander, or something like that, something that doesn't have a pump over on, okay? Because this is the easiest way to learn. So this is a basic heating system, no pump over on. This is an old fashioned boiler. This is just for, it's all I really had, unless I was gonna draw a diagram of a boiler, but it's half past 12. Um, you know, the arts and crafts ain't coming out. Oh, but I wanted the arts and crafts. So the power comes from here, goes into this, and then someone selects hot water, okay? So if someone wants to click that on and select hot water, the power comes out of here and goes through the thermostat. So if the thermostat is then saying, oh, I want heat, the power comes out of there, comes to the valve. So if the valve is told, oh, I want heat, the valve opens, and the orange wire sends power to the boiler and the pump on an old traditional system. So the chain has to be complete for the boiler and the pump to run. So quite simply, just remember this order, spur, programmer, temperature control, two port boiler pump if you just remember that and that's the order of power through the system uh, and providing you can remember that that's a good a very good way of understanding what's going on now the reason everyone goes to this orange wire is because it's easy to identify if you go to this wire the system providing is wired correctly, okay, and your fault find, remember your fault find to a system that was working and now is not, this is the go-to. You go, the orange wire identifies itself. No other wire in this wiring center, or wires in this wiring center, identify what they are other than the wires at the two port. So providing it's wired correctly, you know the orange wire is the wire that should make the boiler and the pump come on, okay? The neutral is the neutral, you don't need to worry about that. The earth is the earth, you don't need to worry about that. Now remember, this is a system that was is wired correctly and was working, and you're looking for a faulty component. So this is what tells the boiler and the pump to run. This is power from the thermostat to make the valve do its job. Okay, and the gray wire here. Now this is where things will get confusing for new guys, okay? The daisy chain is very slightly different here. Although the power, the, the order the power works is correct. What actually happens here, inside this valve, the, uh, the gray and the orange wire go onto a switch. Okay, and when the valve is in closed position, these wires inside the valve are apart. Once the valve fully opens, so that its motor's right over to B, inside the valve, the gray wire and the orange wire touch inside here. Okay, now this gray wire in the wiring center is permanent live. Okay, so when that, when that, Valve motor's over and these two wires touch inside the valve. The grey is wired to permanent live in here. So all that does is that grey makes that orange live. And that orange is what powers the pump and the boiler. The underlying fundamental thing here is just remembering this order. That's the key thing now that you need to take away from this. Forget all of this stuff to do with the colours and all that. Just the key thing is remember the order. From left to right, you remember that order. And uh, we'll come back and we'll get this wired now in a second. Okay, thank you for watching that. I understand that would have been uh, difficult for a lot of people who have an understanding. Uh, this, you got to start somewhere. This was for new guys, really, just trying to explain that sort of process of control of a heating system. Uh, hopefully, the next video will be a lot more interesting to a lot more people. I really appreciate you watching. The PDFs will be available to patrons first for obvious reasons because they're, you know, throwing a few dollars in a hat effectively. Uh, any of you out there that aren't patrons that would like to be, I would really appreciate it. I mean, if you give a busker a quid, why couldn't you give someone who's trying to train you a quid? So I uh, really appreciate that. 
and uh, the new the next video is filmed and just needs to be edited. This one took ages because there was it was filmed twice and it was a mess and yeah, so it was still a bit of a mess. But hopefully you get the point. That's the key bit. Hopefully you get the point, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.